This video explains how to reverse the access limits of a plot using base R and the ggplot2 package in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines two to three of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains five rows and two columns, which are called X and Y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the plot function of the basic installation in the R programming language, then we can apply the code that you can see in line five. And in this line of code, I'm applying the plot function to our two data frame columns, X and Y. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that a new plot has been created, which is showing our five data points in a scatter plot. And you can also see that the axes range from one to five on both axes. So let's assume that we want to reverse the y axis values in our plot. Then we can apply the plot function once again, as you can see in lines seven and eight. So in these lines of code, I'm using the same syntax as in the first example. However, I'm also specifying the ylim argument in addition to that. And within the ylim argument, I'm using the ref function and the range function. And I'm applying these functions to the values in our column y. So if you run lines seven and eight of the code, you can see that our plot is updated. And now our y axis has been reversed because now the smallest value one is shown at the upper part of the plot and the largest value five is showing at the lower end of the y-axis. So in this first example, I have explained how to use the basic installation of the R programming language to reverse the axis of a base R plot. However, it's also possible to reverse the axis of a ggplot2 plot. And this is what I want to show you in the second example of this tutorial. So in the first step of this second example, we need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 10 and 11. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geompoint, as you can see in lines 13 and 14. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that at the top right of RStudio, a new plot object is appearing, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that we have created another scatter plot in the typical ggplot2 style, which is having axes ranging from one to five, as in the original plot that we have drawn in base R. So let's assume that again, we want to reverse the y-axis of this plot. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 17 and 18. So in line 17, I'm specifying the plot object that we have created before. And then I'm adding to this the scale y reverse function. So if you run lines 17 and 18 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated. And now the y-axis is shown the other way around because this time the smallest value one is shown at the top and the largest value five is shown at the bottom of the plot. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.